Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is, oh, forget about that. J just come and look at this, come and look at this. So look at this, look at this, this Raspberry Pi here. It's a Raspberry Pi 4 with eight gigs of RAM. It's running three operating systems simultaneously. It's running Ubuntu and Debian and CentOS. And I can connect to all three and run commands on all three. In fact, I'll demo that in a minute. But it's running three operating systems all at the same time. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So of course what we're talking here about is virtualization. The idea that one piece of hardware, one computer can pretend to be two, three, four, five, ten, twenty, whatever computers by offering a very thin layer of abstraction that allows the common hardware, so the same CPU, the same uh, graphics card, the same um, uh, disks, the same memory to be used, but for each operating system that boots up, it thinks it's running its own private machine. When it boots up, it goes, oh look, a CPU, oh some memory, oh great, a USB bus, I'm, I'm, I'm a computer, I can do, I can run in my normal environment. And that thin layer is called a hypervisor. Now a hypervisor can run just as an application. So if you take, for example, VirtualBox, you can boot that up on Windows, you can boot that up on Linux, and you can run a virtual PC inside of a window, and the OS that's running in there, Windows or, or Linux, thinks it's its own PC. And you can also get hypervisors that are, in fact, installed directly onto the computer. So there is no other operating system like Windows or Linux. It's bare metal. It's the idea that it's the first thing that boots up and is just a hypervisor. And its only job is to install other operating systems on top of itself in a virtualized environment. So you can have multiple operating systems running on one piece of hardware. And there are several uh, bare metal hypervisors out there. One of the best known ones is ESXi from VMware. It's free to download and use uh, according to certain restrictions, personal use and so on. And there is now a alpha, not even beta, not even, but there is a kind of an alpha build working for ARM processors, which means you can run it on some of these very high-end ARM servers, but you can also run it on a Raspberry Pi. So by allowing us to run it on a Raspberry Pi, it means that we can take a Raspberry Pi, let's say eight gigs of memory, and then run three versions of Linux on it, on top of this hypervisor, each with you know two, two and a half gigabytes of memory, each given a slice of the CPU, uh, and then you can run all three of them simultaneously. So virtualization running on top of a Raspberry Pi. And that's what I've done, and that's what that Raspberry Pi was running. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a quick overview of how you do it. There are full instructions provided by the uh, people that have put together this uh, demo, and I'll give links to the full instructions. I'll give you a quick overview of how you do it, and then a demo of it actually running, so you can see, uh, what did I say, Ubuntu CentOS, and it was Debian all running simultaneously on that one Raspberry Pi. Okay, the first step to getting it going is you need to make sure you have the latest version of the Raspberry Pi EE Prom installed on your Raspberry Pi. And the way you do that is you boot up into Raspberry Pi OS and you run the RPI EE prom update command, which you only find in the Raspberry Pi OS, Raspbian as it used to be called. You update that and that will make sure that you've got the latest version of that running. The next thing you need to do is to create the UEFI boot card, boot microSD card for your Raspberry Pi. Now the UEFI uh, boot card allows the Raspberry Pi to be system ready, which is a set of standards from ARM that allow any operating system to know what in situation they're booting up into, what environment they're booting up into, where they're going to find some basic information, which why I can run uh, Ubuntu, Debian and uh, CentOS because they're all system ready and when you boot up using this method they're not like oh this is a Raspberry Pi, what do I have to do, how do I boot, what do... it's like okay if this is a standard environment we can get both and really that's what you find, that's what kind of the Windows era gave us this idea of standard kind of boot up parameters. You can boot up and you say, oh, this is a PC, look, there's a PCI bus, there's a card, there's a, and, and that's what we kind of get from the legacy, right back to those IBM PC, PS2, all those machines. We're now getting the same idea on ARM architecture machines, particularly now on the Raspberry Pi we're talking about. So it boots up server ready and it knows kind of what the standard environment is. And to create that card, you need two things. You need the official Raspberry Pi firmware and you need the UEFI firmware, and they need to copy some files from one and some files from the other onto a micro SD card into the root directory, no folders involved here, into the root directory, that was a mistake I made, that's why I'm saying that, into the root directory, and then you can boot from that. Again, full exact detailed instructions uh, will be in the link below. And once you have your UEFI 
card working, you then boot up your Raspberry Pi, you go into the UEFI configuration and you need to disable the three gigabyte limit because it's set by three gigabytes, has an eight gigabyte Raspberry Pi, you need to get rid of that and say, no, no, I want the whole eight gigabytes, please. And then next up, of course, you need a copy of the ESXi software itself. That comes as a .iso file. You can put that onto a USB flash drive using software like etcher.io fairly simple procedure, select the uh, the ISO file, select the USB drive you want to copy it to, hit the button and it will just go ahead and do that. You then, once you've boot up your Pi into UEFI mode, you can then select from the boot menu that you want to boot that USB drive and that will then boot up your a copy of ESXi on the Raspberry Pi itself. Now at this point it's worth mentioning that you can't install ESXi onto that micro SD card because that is used for booting the UEFI uh, program firmware. So you have to have some form of external storage. Now you can do it by putting in another uh, blank uh, USB drive. Uh, you can put that in there. Or what I'm doing is I'm using an SSD that's in an SSD to USB adapter, and then you stick that in there. So I'm installing it onto an SSD, but actually it's still going through USB. You can, of course, just put a very fast uh, USB thumb drive in there if you wanted to. You then need to follow the standard uh, install instructions that are there from uh, ESXi. It's not that very complicated, and you'll pick where you want to install it. In my case, the SSD, you could also install it on a, a thumb drive. But notice, not the thumb drive you booted from, and it's not the micro SD card. There has to be some other piece of storage that you install it onto. Then once you've done that, you reboot again, you go back again into the EFI, UEFI uh, configuration, and you make sure you set that SSD drive or that USB drive as the boot drive for the UEFI firmware. So how it works is the Raspberry Pi will first boot off the micro SD card, that will bring it up into the UEFI environment, system ready environment, and then that says, right, I'm now gonna boot from this drive that you've specified, and that will boot up the uh, VMware program. At that point, you get very, very little information on the screen. You just get a nice piece of text saying, yeah, you've booted it up, and it gives you the IP address. And actually, all of the configuration is done via a web browser. So you then go to the web browser, and from there, you can start adding virtual operating systems. You can configure the whole system, uh, and you can actually even interact with those operating systems, which is what I'm going to show you now. Okay, so I've opened a web browser using the URL displayed on the boot screen. And here you have to type in your username and password, which was set during the ESXi uh, installation. So we will just log in. Okay, and up comes the web interface. There's lots of information here. Uh, most of it's pretty obvious once you study it a little bit to see what's going on. But this is the host view. We are running here on a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B with eight gigabytes of RAM, and that's the host bit up here, and it can give you some statistics about what's going on. That's fine. Now, you can also go into here to look at the virtual machines, and as I said, I've got three virtual machines. Ubuntu Server, CentOS, and Debian 10.6, and they are not currently running. So what you can do is you can click on one of them, and then we can say, well, I'd like to power on, please. And we will see that that now moves into the kind of booting up mode, and we can see here, and if you double click on this, you get a bigger display. And this is how you can actually interact with that operating system directly from the web browser. Of course, you can connect via secure shell and so on. So that's booting up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this little minimize button here, shrink, and that keeps that down here in the corner. And then we can go back here and look at our next ones. We can go to CentOS here and we can power that on as well. Okay, and that will do the same thing. And let's shrink that down there while it starts to boot. And then finally, we also, we can start up uh, Debian as well. Okay, and then we can uh, shrink that down there as well so that all three are now running down there. As you can see, as I've got the other two are in their kind of boot stages, you can still see here that the Ubuntu server is still doing its boot up. So all three are now running on uh, that one Raspberry Pi, and each one is a virtualized machine running here on this one piece of hardware, that's the uh, Raspberry Pi. Let's bring up Debian again here, and we're going to uh, log in uh, using my ever so secret password. So, okay, so that's running there. What's going on down one of these? How's this doing? Is this getting near to running? Now, what you can do is you can actually look, you know, these actually came on top of each other. You can actually see both of them running here at the same time. Uh, now the Ubuntu server has also got the desktop on there. That's now finished running. So we'll bring that 
uh, just down to here. And of course we can log into this as well. Okay, so that's running there. Now, obviously, there is performance. Uh, the performance is shared across all of these operating systems, so it's still a, a Raspberry Pi. However, of course, when they're not, when it's not being used, because maybe you want to go to these only occasionally because you want to build something on Ubuntu, you want to check the build on, on CentOS, whatever your, your need is, of course, then the other ones are just sitting there idle and they're not actually using... Uh, that much uh, of the uh, overheads of the of the processor. But what I want to show here is that we can run uh, top in uh, all of these and have them running simultaneously. Let's see if we can get that running here on this uh, Debian one as well. System tools. Okay, top. Now, how can we arrange this? Let's put that up there a bit like that. Bring that down there a bit like that. Okay, so there you go. That is all three uh, operating systems running top at the same time on the same uh, Raspberry Pi. Now, I did some very simple testing. I ran speed test GPC version uh, on a normal Raspberry Pi 64 bit using Ubuntu. And then I ran the same uh, Ubuntu that I've got here, the same test without the desktop running in both cases. And basically with just one uh, operating system running, and so there's no resources being used anywhere else, just running it on side of the hypervisor on the, the Raspberry Pi is about 10% slower. So you do lose about 10% of the performance. Uh, obviously, you wouldn't just run one OS. that You'd lose 10% for literally no reason. But what I'm trying to say is it's not like you're losing 50% or 75%. There's a 10% overhead, let's put it that way. And the advantage is then with that 10% loss, you can run multiple operating systems exactly as we're doing here. Okay, that's it. So while it's maybe a little bit complicated, multiple steps, getting the firmware right, booting up into it, then booting off another thing. If you do follow the instructions, this is actually a fairly powerful piece of technology. Now, it's still very much kind of pre-production, certainly not good enough for running day to day. I've certainly had times where I've come back to it after a few hours, it's not responding or one of them has crashed or something like that. So it's very much a work in progress, but it works. It does actually work. And the promise of what it can deliver further down the road once they iron out all those little kinks and problems is absolutely amazing. And you can do it by starting with just a Raspberry Pi and get into this whole thing. Of course, in the data center, where you've got these real ARM servers, like the Honeycomb server and other ones like that, that's really going to be uh, an amazing piece of tech for the, for the data center and for ARM uh, processors in general. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.